Hi everyone, this is Dom from Dom Designs. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to turn a thumbnail sketch you can draw with a pencil into a beautiful vector graphic illustration in Adobe Illustrator. By the way, if you haven't checked it out yet, if you like the color palette I am using for my illustrations, head over to my Etsy shop, link below, to download the full color palette handpicked and created by yours truly. You will see it in full use in this tutorial. Let's start by creating a new document at 1000 by 1000 pixel resolution. So as you can see here, I imported a snapshot of my illustration into Adobe Illustrator. You can import any image into Illustrator by doing a Command Shift P or a Control Shift P on your keyboard. We're going to start by creating our template layer. Let's double click on the little thumbnail in our layers panel and click on the template option. Let's name this layer template. Make sure to select template option on. This will drop our layers opacity to 50% by default. And let's confirm by clicking on OK. Let's begin by blocking in our main shapes. I'll create a new layer and name it Outline. We will use a black stroke with an 11 points thickness. Let's round off the caps and corners in our stroke panel. Now, with the ellipse tool, we will create a circle for the main shape. Let's make sure it's perfectly centered. Let's zoom in a little, and now we're going to be creating the main shape of the mountain. So, I'll be using the pen tool over here in the tools panel. And we're going to start by clicking right over here and at the peak of the mountain. And let's just keep clicking until we get the main shape of the mountain completed. Now, to close off this shape, what I like to do is we're going to reconnect it to the beginning of our stroke. What we're going to do is we're going to go head over to our tools panel and click on the shape builder and we're going to select on the shape that we do not want to keep. So let's click on this overlapping part right over here. Like so and now it's deleted. What you'll see is that now we have two different shapes, one for the mountain and one for the circle of the main badge. Now with our curvature tool what I like to do is I like to make the sides of the mountains a little bit curved. So let's click right over here and right over here and bring them in a little bit. And we're probably gonna bring in this little part over here at the tip and leave it like so. If it's your first time using the curvature tool, let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in seeing an in-depth tutorial on how to use the tool. Also, if you have been enjoying this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I'll be uploading Illustrator videos twice a week and you don't wanna miss them. Going back to our pen tool, we're going to be drawing what we call is the cornice part of the mountain. Now let's follow the sketch that I drew by clicking on these points over here. Like so. Now this looks pretty good. Now we're going to connect this to our original point, like this, because we do want to make a separate shape. Now let's select the base of our mountain and our cornice, and we're going to go back to our Shape Builder tool. Now with the Shape Builder tool, this time we're going to be clicking on the part that we don't want. And here it is, we're going to be clicking right over here, and our shape has been divided. Now if you take these apart, you will notice that we have three different shapes. This looks pretty good. So now we're going to be drawing the huge sun that's going to be cast behind our mountain. So with the ellipse tool, let's draw a perfect circle right down the middle. Let's move it up a little bit like this. And we're going to go back to our shape builder tool as we did before. So let's select the base of the mountain and our sun. And with the shape builder tool, we're going to click on the part we do want to keep. And this time it's the sun part. So let's click. Now this part that's overlapping, we don't need it anymore. We could delete it. Now moving on to our clouds, we're going to go back to our pen tool and we're going to be clicking on these three parts right here. You're going to see why soon. We're going to go back to our curvature tool and we're just going to bring these up like that. Now this gives the same effect as if we would have used a bunch of circles. Now let's continue with this over here. Curvature tool and bring it up like so. Let's move on to the other side. We're going to keep following the same procedure.
Great, this is starting to look pretty good. Now let's move on to the details on our mountain peak. Now let's head over to our pen tool and click P on our keyboard and we're going to trace this out. Now we're going to select the second point right over here and we're going to curve it in a little bit. Now we're going to be moving on to our width tool. So let's select it right over here. You can use Shift W on your keyboard and let's bring it in a little bit as to make it sharper. This doesn't look too bad. Now let's continue it. We're going to be using our pen tool again. Let's create another line right over here with our eyedropper tool. We're going to click on the stroke as to make it the same thickness. And we're going to head over to our shape builder tool again. And we're going to fix this stroke up just so it looks a little bit better. Let's bring it in a bit over here. And we're going to make it thinner right there. And let's bring it back up like so. So it looks sort of seamless. Now let's continue the same process with the other details of the mountain. Wow, this is starting to look really great. And now is the fun part. It's time to add color and life to our drawing. For the coloring part, we are going to be using our custom palette. We are going to bring it in a little bit closer and we're going to make the thumbnails a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. Let's double click and name this layer color and click on okay. Now let's drag this color layer below our outline layer. For this coloring process, we are going to want to have all of our colors to be on the color layer below our outline. Luckily, we made our lives easier by making sure most of our illustration has fully closed shapes apart from our clouds and we will get to that later. What we will do is create an identical copy below our outline. So let's click on our main circle shape and go to the edit panel and click on copy. And then we go back and click on paste to front. What this will do is create a circle right above our original one. We then invert the stroke to fill and give this a basic blue color. This won't be our final color. So taking this blue color, we're going to go to our layers panel and click on the little red dot right over here. And we're going to drag it right below to our color layer. As you can see, the blue color is now below the outline layer. This is how we're going to be coloring the rest of our artwork. Let's do the same for the sun. So let's click on it right now. We're going to go to our edit panel, copy, and then we're gonna do paste to front. You could do command C and then command F, it's much quicker. And we're gonna give this color maybe an orange, like so. And we're gonna drag our little red circle once again down to our color layer. Let's do the same for the rest of the mountain. This looks great. We finally have our basic colors and as you can see they're all separated on this color layer. And we did not affect at all the outline layer. As I said before, the cloud parts will be done a little differently. We will take a gray color and remove its stroke. On our current layer, we will head over to the pen tool and basically what we will do is trace over our cloud strokes. As you can see, this cloud is now colored. We will do the same process for the rest of the clouds.
Great, now that we have our colors set, we are going to be adding the shadows to our drawing. This will bring in a lot more life into this. So, what we're going to be doing next is I'll be adding a new layer. And this layer, we're going to name it Shadows. Now we're going to be tracing out all the shadow areas of our sketch. So let's start from the base of the mountain. We're going to take our pen tool and with our black colored in, we're going to trace this out like so. Try to be as smooth as possible by using the least amount of anchor points. Now let's do the other half of the mountain. Close it in. We'll follow the stroke over here. Now it's a little hard to see, so we're going to change this color to a gray. That way we can see what's happening. And let's follow the strokes that we already created. And close it off. Let's make this part gray as well. Now for this part of the mountain, we're going to do the same thing with our pen tool, with our gray color. We're going to close this up like this. And this part, we're going to follow the lines we already created. Let's connect it down here. And let's bring it all the way up here. Like so. For this part, my original sketch wasn't the best. So we're going to be improvising a little bit. So let me try something like this. And let's bring it up. Let's hide it behind that stroke. There, it looks kind of good. I think I like it. Let's use a little bit of a darker blue on our color palette. And for this part, we're going to use a light blue. So I wasn't too satisfied with this. So with our light blue, we're going to come back and we're going to try and fix this up a little bit. So I'm going to add a shape right over here. Like so. I'll add another shape right here. Now we don't want these separate shapes. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all three of them. And on our pathfinder right over here. We're going to click on the first one and that's merge. So we have one full shape. So I wasn't a fan of the color I chose for the base of the mountain. So I applied the dark blue base color and for the shading we will click on our color palette and select a darker version of the blue that we originally used. Next we'll give this illustration some life by applying some bright gradients to our sun and sky. Let's go to the gradient panel to the right and we'll use the first option. Let's add a dark gradient going from left to right. Using our DOM Designs color palette, I'll use this red and drag it towards the black thumbnail. And for our light color, let's use this really bright orange. Beautiful, this simple gradient adds so much more dimension to the artwork. For the cornice of the mountain, I thought maybe our shadow was a little too dark, so let's bring that down with this color. Now let's go ahead and add a gradient to our sky. This will make the artwork really stand out. Let's go back to our gradient panel and select the first option. By pressing G on your keyboard, we will make the gradient go from up to down. So what we're going to do for the background is we're going to do a gradient going from a light green to a darker blue and you're going to see the contrast between the sky and the sun is going to look great. I'm really happy how this is turning out. To finalize, what we're going to do is we're going to add some snowflakes in the sky. So I created an extra layer above our color layer and named it details. What we will do is add some small white circles sporadically.
And there you go, that's how you turn a rough sketch into a clean and beautiful vector graphic in Adobe Illustrator. I hope you enjoyed the video and please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Cheers everyone!